Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Today I'm drawing a old timey, I would say art deco fortune teller. I'm just putting in the big shapes and if you notice I the reason it's hard to see is part of it is I draw very lightly when I'm starting and I think the the you know the lighter you draw and the the more preliminary your lines are the more chance you are more chance you have of correcting them if they're not right so the, the more unfinished you keep your drawing there's the better chance there is of you having a better drawing and the one thing you'll find as you draw more is that your lines will get better sooner so you won't you'll get to your finished lines quicker the lines that make the drawing look the way you you want it to look just framing in the hair roughly I'm really aiming for that that you know Victorian area Victorian era with with art deco look and everything I'm I'm drawing is to that aim. And if you look at the my inspiration like for this design say someone like Owen Jensen these old time tattooers were the reason their designs look so great is cuz they have they were inspired by art of the day. which today looks really retro and cool. So the reason we like, you know, I like those old old school tattoo designs is because they have a, a, a Victorian look about them or an art deco look about them that's very appealing. So when I draw something like it, I, I'm trying to achieve that myself. And notice with the eyes, you know, when people say, don't draw eyes that look like footballs or don't draw your lips this way, well, these eyes look a little like footballs, except for the hint of a tear duct. And the lips are very cartoonish, you know, if you're... So when someone tells you don't do this or don't do that, when it comes to creativity, there's no rules. Like, yes, I'm following guy lines. The eyes are halfway down the head. But when I draw, I, I know the rules, but I'm also thinking about there's no rules if I don't want there to be. So here's just a collection of some old fortune tellers that I found that are just great old photos. You notice when you look at old photos and you, you see the people and you think, hmm, those old timey people aren't that attractive. Well, I think these you know, old fortune tellers kind of prove that wrong, these ones at least. I'd say they're pretty timeless looking. great photos so back to what I was saying know the rules and then keep in mind as you're drawing that uh, anyone that tells you you have to do this you have to do that I don't like being told I have to do this when I'm drawing I have to do that there's no rules for creativity so draw whatever you want in any style you want with any proportions you want. And maybe you'll come up with something really crazy. It's calling for uh, fortune teller's turbans to have, you know, a jewel or medallion on the front of some sort. And they wore turbans because they were trying to, trying to be mystical, like they're, you know, from India, um, bringing something mystical from overseas or the Orient or, you know, something, something unknown from Asia.
to the Western culture. It's a nice big hoop earrings. I think they're suitable for fortune tellers. Fortune telling actually, even though I, I talk about it as like being a early 1900s thing, it actually goes back to early Egyptians. Like early occultism, I guess you could say. Which the early scientists were kind of, if you think about it, they were also occultists because they were just looking for things that weren't known in, in all fields like science, math, and strange powers of the human mind, I guess you could say. But we're getting off topic there. So notice I'm trying to, to keep... I'm, I'm going around the design once again, trying to make it look like it's a three-dimensional person as opposed to just, even though it's a line drawing, I'm trying to make it look like, you know, there's a back to the person, like a three-dimensional object. So always try to think of a person as, uh, you know, as, as forms, like, you know, cylinders, circles that are, are, are going, you know, it's a full thing. So here's just uh, some some cool illustration. From, I've always liked Art Deco, and I was inspired for this design. Whenever I could squeak in some Art Deco look, style into a design, I will, because it's just such a great. That's from the movie Metropolis, which is 1927. Art Deco masterpiece. Check it out if you wanna. It's a, it's a, like a kind of a badass trip of a movie, but it's beautiful. In 1927, the effects are just amazing, and just it's an Art Deco masterpiece. So, if you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it. Silent movie, by the way. So, but just visually, it's stunning to watch. Moon stars and seeing eye, just some occulty looking fortune teller things that I thought would look neat on the crystal ball. And that one too is kind of a football eye. Like I said, I'll tell you to do this and that, and most you'll watch many YouTube videos, they'll say do this and that, but you don't have to do anything. Just keep that in the back of your mind. I don't have to do anything when I draw. But I'm drawing old school style here, which is what I like, so I, I do follow in a, a framework for the design. So, uh, the, the fascination with fortune telling kind of started with seances, people wanting to contact the dead. Uh, Ouija boards were really popular in the earlier 1900s. Because if you think, you know, who, who wouldn't like to talk to a deceased loved one? Uh, and people really didn't know a lot about it at the time. So, but there were a lot of charlatans and a lot of fortune telling was banned in many areas. It was known as like the rise of spiritism at the turn of the century. It was mostly upper middle class people, uh, predominantly women, but not all. And they came up with all these great, you know, automated fortune tellers, find it fairs and stuff. They're really cool and creepy looking too. Pretty neat. And that looks like kind of the inspiration for the the Zoltar one from the movie Big with Tom Hanks, which you saw at the beginning of the video, which is pretty, I, I enjoyed the movie. It's, it's hokey, but I, I quite liked it. 
And then they even came up with table in the fifties tabletop fortune tellers that shoot a little fortune when you put in a penny. That would be in diners and stuff. Not fortune tellers from the uh, from a Twilight Zone episode. Can't remember what happens in the episode though. Yeah, fortune telling was mostly for upper middle class and upper middle class and upper class because the poor people were too busy working. They didn't have and trying to make ends meet. They didn't have time for paying for fortune telling fancy in their fancy parlors and ballrooms and stuff like that. So it was a wealthy person thing. And in, notice in the crystal ball's base, it's, it's still, it's curving around, kind of the curves, echoing the curves on the body. Kind of give it a, a three-dimensional look as well. I saw a YouTube video uh, on drawing eyes, good video, but he's saying, do not make spider-like eyes, uh, spider-like eyelashes. And for this video, I recommend spider-like eyelashes. That's what, exactly what I'm drawing for this style. So that kind of proves what I was saying. There's, you know, no hard and fast rules. You can do whatever you want. a little like a football, kind of like a lemon. So when I draw the face, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do a video on just how I, I, I think of the, I draw the forehead and then I come down and draw the cheek and chin and if I extended the line that I just finished on the chin, you could almost extend it around into a full heart shape, um, which sounds funny, but it's a kind of a, a shorthand. I kind of think of the, that left line I just drew on the face as like the side of a heart, and that allows me to just go to kind of create a design with a little pinup face with the line going up to the forehead and then coming down with like a half of a, like a fraction of a heart. Um, I hope that just made sense, but... Um, you know, if you want to use a com more complicated method of to construct a face, you you can do that, the Loomis method, or drawing a, a ball and then and c chopping it up, putting the eyes halfway down. You can do that too. But I'm I can be lazy. I'm like I I don't know. I like the quickest way possible. So so I'm just gonna put in the um, put in the turban, which. Always reminds me of this guy, Alexander the Mind Who Knows, who was popular in the 30s. And then when I think of that guy, I think of the Pike Place Market in Seattle. Because when I, I remember last time I was there, they had a uh, a giant uh, billboard poster in the Pike Place mar Market from the Alexander from like the 30s or whatever. And then there's a very cool um, magic shop in Seattle in the Pike Place Market as well. And then I'll go across the street to the first ever Starbucks um, which is in Seattle, and I it always, I'm always happy to see the old logo, which has the the Starbucks woman, the mermaid, m with breasts, which they eventually removed. Uh, like it, they took out, took away her nipples because they thought that wasn't correct. So that's totally on topic. Yes. My point is, even though Starbucks is a big, you know, uh, kind of a big corporate monster. I still, it's kind of neat to just see the old logo in the the old building with the original store.
Same to you. Same to you, buddy. And here's another, just a quick, some deco fortune tellers I like, and cool fortune teller images. That one's creepy. Me. I don't know what's with that one, but that's that's. A, and that she may not be a fortune teller, but she's a dancer, but she made it in anyway. And there's tea leaf reader. And crystal ball gazer, also known as scrying. And that's just a great picture. And this one, here's another one. That, that, she's creepy. Yeah, she's creepy. There's something creepy about the Victorian area too. Maybe that's why I like it. It's beautiful and creepy at the same time. So the hair, when I'm drawing the hair, notice I'm, I'm framing the cheekbones and um, temples. I don't just put straight lines down or, or um, there's thought to where I'm putting the, the squiggles, I guess you could say, in a, you know, if I'm talking to you scientifically. So I tried to make a perfect circle, but it's a little flat on the bottom right, which for the old time look is okay, but I would have preferred it to be more circular. And I was talking to another artist about self-criticism. Um, so you need to be constantly you know critical of your work so you can get better you need to be able to look at your artwork and say hmm this is where I failed or where it, where it's not good so you can improve and that's how you improve without without saying oh this is you know my you know all my artwork is terrible and I'm a piece of shit oh pardon the pardon the French um, without getting too down on yourself you know what I mean because artists can do that you just see so many amazing artists out there and think ah oh, my artwork's just not good and we all do it so you need to strike a balance as an artist between criticism constructively criticizing your artwork so you can improve it without tearing yourself apart so that you don't want to draw because you're down on yourself and your art so think about that uh, and realize that all artists do it I knew a girl many years ago she was a great artist she could just, her portraits were so good. And she really didn't think she, she was as good as she was. Like she was so down on herself, on her art. She was actually bipolar, but that's another thing. But yeah, so, and she was, her portraits were great. She could draw uh, an accurate like, like likeness of someone in charcoal so quickly and it looked so great. I wonder whatever happened to her. Hope she's okay. So my point is, though, you know, even really great artists like that get down on themselves. So just try and try and just keep drawing and, and be constructive, but don't get down on yourself. Let's add in some triangles, a very Art Deco motif. Um, in a lot of actually, uh, a lot of designs from many different cultures use the, the triangle. This looks great. And it's kind of like, you know, be careful comparing yourself to other artists because you, it's like uh, a big tough guy going, always going around looking to pick a fight and he's tougher than a lot of guys, but eventually he's going to meet someone that's a lot tougher than he is. My point is that there's always someone better than you and me and that's just the way it is. Like if you, now with the internet you see there's all these amazing artists. Um, 
I'm sure I could go find one that's that's better than most people, myself included, is probably only six years old, you know what I mean? So I, 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 I'm careful to not, you know, not to, to compare myself against everybody, so I, you know, bring myself down and don't continue to keep making artwork, do you know what I mean? So be careful with your comparisons to other people and just keep trying to improve. Half circle is another kind of art deco motif. And one of these days I'm gonna uh, do a series of videos showing you how I how I color these once I get a bunch of videos made so hit subscribe if that's something you'd like to see down the road oh and then let me know if there's anyone watching this from Seattle let me know if that big Alexander billboard sized uh, old poster is still hanging in the Pike Place market so I haven't been to Seattle for probably 25 years, last time I was there was probably in the, you know, last time I was there, Cobain was probably still alive in the grunge era, are they early, maybe the early 90s, might be the late 80s, holy moly, time flies, I always like Seattle though, okay, I'm getting off topic, off topic again. So there's no rhyme or reason to these details. I just start, like, obviously I planned this design out before I made this video, but I just started trying things, see what works. That, that's, that's why I say there's no rules. You gotta just keep trying things and see what works for you um, and see what works for whatever it is you're drawing. And the, the more different things you try, the more you'll find what you like, you know? you're doing well guys and we'll be talking to you again very soon take care